Good evening, YouTube, and welcome to a very special edition of The Gentleman's Corner. Tonight, I have the number one most requested person for me to interview on The Gentleman's Corner, which is Apocalypse. How are you doing tonight? I'm very well, thank you very much. I didn't realize I was the number one requested, so that makes me feel very worthy, nervous, and inferior. Well, <laughs> <laughs> to say the least. The, the number one most requested, the clo there's a close second, which is Thunder behind you, and I don't, I have no idea if the, wow. you'll ever be on here. So um, I, I think for you, for this, it ends up being something where you seem a little bit more approachable, and so a lot of people request it. Oh, um, uh, now, to kind of start off, it's the first question I ask to every single person, uh, and this is just to kind of get to know you just initially, which is who or what inspired you to YouTube? And why? Okay. Going right back to the start, the thing that inspired me to YouTube was, without sounding, I suppose, above my, you know, above my station, I thought once upon a time I wasn't too bad at gaming. You know, I thought with the whole FPS genre and playing Modern Warfare 2 and everything else, I used to do okay. And I went onto YouTube to watch some videos to see how I, you know, how I could improve and everything else. And I came across a guy called Sandy Ravage, which we all know and love. And the way Sandy Ravage played, I thought was quite similar to me. And I thought, this is what I want to do. I want to upload videos that showcases my game style, my technique, and hopefully my skills, and combine it with some metal music, which is, <laughs> which is what I'm quite into. And I never really anticipated anything doing along the lines of commentaries or talking over a microphone, to be honest with you. And it was only after about three videos, after my first two videos where, you know, they never got any views after about three months. And I thought I'd explode on YouTube and do really well after the first video and become this YouTube, sens YouTube sensation from England that was going to take the world by storm. Um, somebody said to me, look, you've got to commentate. You've got to talk. People want to hear people talk. That's what you need to do. So... I guess from the gaming respect, it was Sandy Ravage. From the uh, commentary respect, it was a guy called TF141 Ghost. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. No, I haven't. He, he kind of retired his channel. Um, he was actually a friend of Sandy Ravage's, and that was how I kind of came across his channel. He's a guy from America. Um, also, as well, you only use me Blade. He was another one. And I, I noticed their gaming and their commentary techniques was very similar to how I'd like to do mine which is as if you're talking to your friends. That was that was the kind of route I wanted to go down, as if you're sitting down with a few friends, having a few beers, and just talking about things that, you know, interested you in the gaming world. And that was what TF141 Ghost used to do. He used to play games, he used to do really well, and he used to talk over them, and just talk in a candid way that people could relate to. Same with Only Use Me Blade. He was probably the first commentator that I came across who interested me in that sense you know and that probably that was probably the the direction i took and i hope to <laughs> i hope to send it down that way but I, I never really thought it would take off as much as i did because it kind of put me off in the sense of where i came from because i come from a place called birmingham in england and everybody from birmingham in england is classed as having the most boring and horrible accent in the world <laughs> <laughs> and I never wanted to talk and the guy who asked me was from England he said why don't you talk why don't you come and talk and I said I'm from Birmingham nobody wants to hear this and he said just give it a go and give it a bash and it seems to be the one thing that's taken over and I was gutted from a you know, well no I won't gutted I was kind of sidetracked from what I intended in the first place because I thought look you know I want to showcase my gameplays but people tended to sway a little bit more towards the the commentary side of things and and that's where it's fell into and I'm not, I'm really happy where where it's gone I'm more than happy than anything excellent so you brought up something in it seems like YouTube has this kind of seesaw where people start to watch videos for the gameplay and then they switch to the commentary. Uh, but that seesaw kind of doesn't go back the other way. It's one of those things where if the spoken word isn't very good, then those channels tend to kind of level out. Do you think, yeah. do you think it's the connection that, that people have in terms of the commentary that keeps them once, once they get to a little bit more of maturity in terms of the YouTube viewer? Yeah, quite possibly. I mean, the thing is, the one thing I've sort of done through my own studies, through my demographics and my analytics, is that most of the people who are subscribed to me are kind of age between the, roughly age between the ages, most of them of about 22 to about 50 odd, you know, which quite surprised me because I, one of the things that really put me off commentating, it was actually about, I'd say it was in the middle of last year, 
I did a video and I was talking about when I was playing on Xbox Live with one of the guys, one of my subscribers, and he turned around to me and he said, uh, he said, oh, we're having a little chat. And he said, wait, wait, how old are you? You know, and roughly about what age are you? And I said, I'm actually 36, which I was last year. And he went, oh, um, okay. What, why are you doing YouTube? And I was like, okay, because uh, uh, I like it. Why? And he said, well, I just thought you might be a little old to do YouTube. Why'd you game? How'd you find the time? And I tell you what, to be honest with you, that that little conversation almost finished me <laughs> completely because it was it was actually before I got you know I don't want to say got big, but it was actually before I got a little bit of you know sort of recognition. And it was one of the things that actually nearly finished me off because I thought, man, maybe I'm too small to do this. And I did a video about it called racism, sexism and ageism, you know, and I, I basically revealed my age to people. I said, look, I'm 36 years old. If you don't like that and if that's a problem for you, I'm really sorry. If, I'm sorry if I pulled the wool over your eyes. I thought that maybe the depth in the tone of my accent and everything else might have given that away. But, you know, some people are probably a little bit shocked by that. So if that's any problem to you, then I do really apologize. Feel free to unsubscribe. And it became apparent that most of the people turned around to me and said, no, God, you know, we, we like, I'm 40, I'm 50, I'm, I'm actually 60. And there was people coming across from all ages who were really interested in what I did. And, you know, that kind of sparked a bit of interest. And there was the there was younger guys as well. You know, there was guys of 17, 16, 15, 13, who were saying, look, we don't care how old you are. We're interested in what you're doing and that's what keeps us here. So, um, yeah, that, that was... A, that was a bit of a driving force for me so from a commentating point of view that kind of that kind of sealed the deal for me to keep carrying on because if it would have been a problem then maybe I would have switched over I don't know if I don't know if I veered off the subject of that a little no bit no that was good that was good now okay, cool. I originally found your channel one of the first times I subscribed to you without YouTube kicking off my subscription me having to resubscribe I don't know how many times that's happened uh, <laughs> but it was don't get, don't get me started on that <laughs> don't get me started on that <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, it was it was right after um, Thunder gave you a little bit of a shout out. And what's funny is I wasn't even subscribed to Thunder, Thunder then. Somebody else had linked me, said, hey, you should listen to this video. It's really good. And I had subscribed to both Thunder and you at that point. Um, and one of the things I think that interested me in interviewing you and also had other people asking for me to interview you is that you seem to want to always give back to the little people. <laughs> yeah. And... Yeah. You know, even even myself, which I have a tiny channel, but there are smaller channels than me that are like, hey, could you help me out? Could you do this? Um, I imagine when we get to the point where it's your channel or even you take a few steps higher and you get to Thunder's channel, it gets very difficult. Where where do you where do you decide or where do you figure out where you want to help somebody? It's hard. It really is hard because I let, let, let me kind of take it right back to when I started. I I was watching videos from people who were on about 100 to 200,000 subscribers and I was watching these guys and thinking, do you know what? There will never be a cat in hell's chance I will ever hit those, those kind of dizzy heights. What I want to do is at least hit one to 200 subscribers and hit an audience where I can entertain people. Now, from that point of view, I thought to myself, you know, I, I was reaching out to these bigger channels. There, there was, I won't, I won't mention the channel's names, but I was kind of reaching out to them. In fact, actually, I'll tell you a little story about one. <laughs> but there was a guy who had a bigger channel than me. I think he was on about 600 subscribers. I was on one. And I sent him a message. I, was, I watched a lot of his videos. You know, he, he actually did it. The first video he ever did, um, sorry, the first video I ever seen that he did was one called Roxio Game Capture Settings, Best Settings you know, for YouTube. Right. And I bought, I bought a Roxio capture card, which wasn't HD. That was the first capture card I bought. And I thought, okay, and I watched this video and it was, there was no commentary behind it. There was a little bit of tippy tappy tippy 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 music going behind it. And I, I watched that and I subscribed to him. Then he started to do commentaries. And I sent him a message one day after liking a lot of his videos and like, so this guy, had a, you know, a couple of hundred subscribers. And I sent him a message and I said, hey, look, you know, I followed your um, I followed your video on how to get the best settings. Can you please just come back and have a look at my video and tell me how I can improve because I've got things. And I, to be honest with you, I hadn't done a, um, a commentary by then. I, my, my first two videos, which wasn't on this channel, which was on the Manic Miner 83 channel, which was my previous one. Mm -hmm. um, the first couple of videos I did were kind of like shotgun collaboration, you know, montage type things. And I said, can you please tell me whether my settings are okay? And his response to me was, maybe. 
<laughs> maybe. And I was like, fucking maybe. Hang on a minute. And I sent him a message. And I was like, maybe. Who the fuck do you think you are? And, and that's my unfortunate downfall. I've got no. I've got a terrible temperament. And I was like, maybe who the fuck do you think you are? You know, I just want help. I liked your videos. I followed you. And he ended up going to my previous two videos, which had like one like, which was from me, and gave them both a dislike. And I was like, man, that is just ball. I cannot believe somebody's gone and done that. And I always swore blind from that moment on, if anything ever happened to me where I got above 200 subscribers, I would try to help people out who were, you know, trying to come up the ranks as best I possibly could. Maybe that comes from the industry I was in because I used to be a builder and I used to get a lot of uh, apprentices who came to me. Now, when I was an apprentice learning how to lay bricks, the guys who used to train me were motherfuckers. Excuse my language, I'm, I, you know, if you cut that out. <laughs> no, that's all right, that's all right. <laughs> they were horrible. They treated me like shit. They, they broke me down like a bus. And I always swore blind when I, you know, when I learned the trade and I got good and I got apprentices on, under my wing, I would try to help them as much as I could and try to get them, you know, the best training that I could give them. And I suppose that the same thing has come with um, come with YouTube. Now that I've got that little bit of, again, I don't want to call it notoriety or fame, which is a horrible word. I, I never want to use that word. I can't believe I've even said that. It's not YouTube fame. Now that I've got that recognition where people do recognize me and where I go on other people's channels like, say, Wings of Redemption or something, and if I like a video, people tend to click that like on that you know, that comments that I'll do. Mm -hmm. I thought once I get that, I will help people through the ranks and I'll try to get them, you know, as much help as possible. And I'll feature people's videos on my channel who I think, you know, are trying and need that help and, and need that recognition because I would have loved that and nobody gave me that chance really. So that's pretty much where that's going from. It's just, it's all about giving. I think once you start giving, you will get it in return somewhere along the lines, it's karma. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, your your gamer tag and your your name, Apocalypse. How did that come about? Was there a particular reason why you chose it? Yeah, I thought it sounded fucking cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much it. Um, the first, the first, well, the first gamer tag I ever came up with was blank um, on my on my Xbox Live, and the reason for that was I was playing Call of Duty Four with some friends, and we came across these four guys who were like blank one, blank two, blank three, blank four. And they fucking murdered us. They absolutely crucified us. And I remember all game, we were saying, these blanks are killing us. What is it with these blanks? And there was something about the name blank that added a little bit of, um, I don't know. It's like a, it had a ghost value to it. Like like, mystery. But, yeah, mystery. Yeah, what is this blank? Who is this blank? What is he all about? And that, that kind of appealed to me. So I, I came up with the name blank. When I came up with the name, um, when I came up with the YouTube name, I ended up coming up with Manic Miner 83, which originally, I don't know if Manic Miner has ever reached America or further than Canada or whatever, but Manic Miner in England was a game that was set back in the 1980s and it was groundbreaking to all games. I suggest you Google it. Have a look for Manic Miner on Google. It's, it's okay. the most fantastic ZX Spectrum game that ever came out and I loved it. It was my first ever game. So I came up with Manic Miner 83. Oh, there you go, 1983, that's when it came out. Um, but as far as YouTube came, that was my first channel, Manic Miner 83, but as far as YouTube came, I wanted to call myself Apocalypse. And the name Apocalypse was taken, so I had to take a couple of little angles and turns. And because my Manic Miner 83 channel wasn't doing as well as I would have liked it to have done, when I started again, I thought, I'll go with Apocalypse because it sounds eerie, it sounds mystical. And like I said before, it sounds fucking awesome because it's the end of the world, the Apocalypse, you know. It's the etch a sketch of the world. <laughs> right. No, it's it's the end of days. Everything comes down and wipes it down and and starts it into one. And I thought that is relevant to my channel. I've got Money Miner eighty three. I'm going to wipe that out and I'm going to start again. The apocalypse. So that was kind of how it came. But I spelt it with a zero and a one. So yeah. that's my creativity to it. Absolutely. Um, all right. So Call of Duty, and this is becoming a sensitive subject for some <clears> people. <throat> I. I love first-person shooters. I started playing video games when I was a little kid for anything, but when I really got into it, it was first-person shooters. Quake, those type of things. I'm, I mean, I'm your age, so, so you know, we're dating ourselves in terms of what type of games, but um, I really love Call of Duty, and I, I want to love it, but it's, it's like it's in that downward spiral. Yeah. What do you think... Because I, I honestly don't think that sledgehammer is going to be able to pull it up i really think i hate to say this but i think treyarch's next next game is going to be the the make or break um 
what do you think needs to happen for it to ha- come back or uh, be the uh, the phoenix out of the ashes? Uh, um, I don't know. I really don't know. I could I could speculate on it, and I would probably be wrong. Um, in my mind, th- this is this is probably taking little nuggets from every game that has been out I suppose from Call of Duty 4 if they if they was to sit down I mean from the last video I just uploaded a couple of hours ago mm-hmm. kind of going over that if they if they could take nuggets from every single game and handpick it and put it into one game to make a groundbreaking game I would say this Call of Duty 4 the simplicity Definitely, you know, it was simple, it was effective, it worked. Modern Warfare 2, I suppose the the excitement of that, you know, there, there was a lot of excitement, exciting prospects in Modern Warfare 2 with the introduction of the extra kill streaks and how innovative they were. Obviously, there was there's, there's something wrong with every Call of Duty. We know this. Right. Danger Close, One Man Army, Commando. I've just been playing, before I've done this uh, commentary with you, I've just been playing some Modern Warfare 2 free-for-all, and i tell you something, now every free-for-all lobby has it just about invited every 11-year-old who quick scopes. It's just <laughs> been the most annoying experience, I can tell you. Uh, but, you know, it's one of those things. Modern Warfare 2, the, um, I suppose, the adventure side of it. For, for, as far as Modern Warfare 2 goes, when that first came out, I remember I was doing a day's work, it, it came out, a few guys I knew bought it. They were phoning me up relentlessly at work and they were saying, oh my God, you get a thing called a Predator missile. You have got to see this. You aim it and it lands on a guy and you can blow three to four people up. It is immense. Shotguns, you know, you like shotguns, mate? Yeah, okay. Well, now they are secondaries, not just primaries. And, you know, it was like the whole... It was a new experience. It was a whole new innovative experience. Black Ops 1, I would say, for the balance. Now, the the worst thing about Black Ops 1 was the introduction of lag compensation. That was where it first came in. That was where it started to get bad. I kind of didn't have a problem with it at first. Then it became very apparent that they would put you in lobbies against people from America, against France, Canada, sorry, Canada, Canada, (laughs) Canada. Where's that? Where's that in the world? Um, Canada, Spain, all over the world. And you would get the lag compensation in, and it would almost become unplayable. I've, I've said in a recent commentary, my worst ever gaming experience I remember was playing against Wings of Redemption and a lot of the Hupid community, or whatever they call themselves. Right. And it was unplayable, and these guys just camped, owned, and dominated. So I would go with the. Um, did I say simplicity? The, 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 no, that's not the simplicity. The, the kind of. The fun for Modern Warfare 2. The, yeah, the, uh, well. As far as Black Ops 1 was concerned, the fun, the fun factor. The one thing I'll say about Black Ops 1, I found that it didn't matter what map I dropped into, it had that good, feel good factor about it, you know? Yeah, whether it was the graphical element of it, whether it was the um, the colors or the color palettes, something about it made me want to keep playing and it kept drawing me in. So maybe that from Black Ops 1. Modern Warfare 3, there's not really much I would want from Modern Warfare 3 apart from. No, there's nothing I want from my no, Warfare No, not at 3. all. Me neither. No, nothing. No, dead. Go on. Forget that one. Um, what was after my Warfare 3? It was Black Ops 2. Now, Black Ops 2 could have been absolutely awesome. Playability-wise, I think the speed of the gameplay was absolutely fantastic, but there was a lot of things with that. So, I don't know. It's hard. With Ghost, they kind of got it right. Again, going back to my last commentary, I kind of stated that with Ghost, they kind of got it right with the connection thing. You know, it's almost like they had a look back. They learned... Still with the host preference, it was still a bit of a problem, but they kind of amalgamated everything into one and almost got it right. But there's still those few elements that people go back, so many Call of Duties and gather into one big ball and put into ghosts and say, no, you've still got it wrong. Right. And that's where then that's where Sledgehammer need to look back and say, right, okay, let's take a bit from that, a bit from that, a bit from that, a bit from that, and put it into one big husk and maybe we'll get it right. So I don't, I don't know. I really don't know. I wish to God I could say. For me, if you could say, what would the next Call of Duty be like to make you want to enjoy it? I would say Modern Warfare 2. That was where the best Call of Duty died. And everything else after that was kind of compensating for, uh, you know, what a great release was. Right. But I don't know. I no, really that, don't. That, that's good. 
So um, we're kind of running through time here. Uh, is there anything we you are wanna... indeed? <laughs> <laughs> is there anything you want to say to anybody that's listening here as we finish up? Um, no, apart from the fact that you know, don't give up hope. It's um, for me the way I still enjoy Call of Duty is going back five years. And if you kind of look at the way Call of Duty is now and you enjoy that, that's fantastic. But if you want to look at Call of Duty in the future and hope that maybe it will progress further, maybe look back three or four or five titles and hopefully they can put that into one and, and bring the past. But they say you can't, re, uh, they say you can't revive the, the, uh, the past. But I don't know. I don't know. I keep my fingers crossed. I don't just keep my fingers crossed. I keep my fingers, my toes and my gentleman's area crust as well to boot. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Well, I want to thank you for your time. Uh, I know this was kind of um, hit or miss with the scheduling, but, uh, you know, the five-hour difference was tough. I, I, again, just thank you for everything, and uh, thank you for visiting the Gentleman's Corps. No, it's an absolute pleasure. I'm going to back, go back to uh, drinking many beers. I would I'm also like time. to do that, so have a great <laughs> night. And yourself. Take care now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.